everyone. Uh, you see this guitar? Well, if you're a subscriber of mine, you most certainly have, as I use it for quite a lot of stuff I do here on my channel. I have, I don't know, 13, 14 guitars, and this is easily one of my favorites and gets played a heck of a lot more than most of the others. Now, it's not some expensive American-made or custom shop Fender Stratocaster. It is a Squire, albeit a bit of a higher-end Squire. What it is, is actually a Squire Olarn. Never heard of it? Well, neither did I before I bought it. Uh, it's an exclusive to Thailand signature model of some famous guitarist from Thailand named Olarn Promjay. I don't know who this guy is, to tell the truth, and I got this guitar for a steal for about a hundred bucks here in Canada on my local marketplace a couple of years ago. I thought it was rather unique looking, so I grabbed it uh, when I first saw it. Plus, you know, a hundred bucks. Uh, it was then that I began to research it a bit because it was uh, it was rather rare in North America, a, a bit different and somewhat oddly configured. Turns out that these came out about 10 to 12 years ago and retailed for about 700 US upon release in Thailand. So at the, the higher end of the Squire price point. Uh, I imagine the, the, uh, the guy who sold it to me didn't really know what he had. He just knew that it was a Squire and probably thought to myself, ah, I can't get much more than 100 bucks for a Squire, so that's what I'll ask. Uh, his loss was was my gain uh, because as I've already stated this is one of my favorite guitars now I am NOT a guitar snob uh, the furthest thing from it uh, and you'd likely know that if you watch my channel on a regular basis my philosophy is that if it plays well and sounds good then it is good period uh, regardless of whether it cost $100 or $3,000. This guitar does both. Plays like a dream, never goes out of tune, even with whammy bar abuse, and sounds killer. Plus, I love its unique configuration. Triple Seymour uh, Duncan Hot Rails, one volume, zero tone controls, uh, a kill switch, which I added myself, 22 frets, rosewood fretboard, floating two-point trem system, uh, the black body, Great not only for hard rock and metal, but for stuff like David Gilmore and whatnot as well. It's just a killer guitar, uh, which is one little problem. This white pickguard, uh, I don't like it. Uh, I want a full black facade on this guitar, but to find an aftermarket black pickguard in this configuration is basically impossible without having like superfluous holes in the tone control area. Plus, these hot rail pickups and the opening uh, in the pickguard are quite squared off not rounded like pretty much every other Strat style pickguard. It must be the signature custom design of this guitar, I suppose. Uh, long story already long, uh, changing out this pickguard with an aftermarket replacement ain't gonna happen without a fair amount of work. So we're gonna remove this one and paint it. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys how it's done. So this tutorial will be twofold. Uh, how to replace a pickguard for one and how to paint one. So let's get started on that right now, shall we? All right then, so the uh, the first thing we need to do here, obviously, is remove the strings. I like to do it like this. All right, strings removed, and uh, so, you know, go uh, invest eight bucks in a new set of strings if you're going to do this job. And uh, so the next thing we have to do is get this pick guard off. So all of these screws, uh, there should be 11 of them all the way around here. Not these, not the pickup screws, just the ones on the outer perimeter. They've all got to come out. All right, so the screws are all removed around the perimeter of the uh, the pick guard. Now, this little uh, the selector switch cover that needs to come off. That should just pull right off with a little bit of force, off. And uh, our volume control needs to come off. Let me get this in frame here. This is uh, known as a cat's claw. This is what I use for uh, removing. You kind of just get it underneath and you go around and 
gradually uh, lift off the, uh, the volume control or tones if you have them off. Now I have a kill, now this has to come out as well, this uh, little, uh, this little washer here, so off the, uh, the volume control. There should be a little washer with that as well. And uh, my kill switch here, I need to remove the washer, the not holding the kill switch in. That needs to come out as well. With its washer. Now, we should be able to lift this out. It often fits right underneath the, uh, the end of the neck. So you kind of pull it out this way. Now we're going to flip this over. These should, oh, I'm missing something here. The uh, screws for the uh, five-way selector switch need to come out. Now be careful when you're doing this. Have a look at your five-way selector before you take it out. Make sure you're going to put it back in the correct position and not backwards. So let's have a look at uh, the position of our, okay, so we've got a black five-way switch on the inside here, silver on that side, so we know that the black is going on the inside when we put it back. So those are our guts here. Now we do have to remove the pickups. So let's get these pickups out, and you're gonna wanna keep, make sure you have your, uh, your neck, middle, and back in order when you pull them out of the pick guard, okay? These just uh, come out. is if you're lowering the pickup, but once you get it so low, it's gonna unscrew from the, uh, from the plate, or the pick guard. Now these have springs underneath them, so hold on to the springs, and again, know which way the spring is positioned into the pickup itself. So in this case, because they're, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of uh, tapered, right? So the uh, the skinny is at the top, the skinny part is at the top, the fat part is at the bottom. So they go in like that into the screw. So this is our next. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all the pickups like this, making sure I know which pickup goes back where. You don't want your neck in the uh, at the bridge and vice versa. Okay, so we're not disconnecting pickups here. We're just disconnecting them from the pick guard, so you don't have to worry about soldering. We're not replacing pick. Uh, we're not replacing pickups here. We're just pulling them out of the pick guard. Okay, so now we have our pick guard completely uh, separated from the guitar, all the electronics. Really, in, in, in this case, there's only one uh, potentiometer here to worry about. So uh, again, if you're doing this and you've got triple potentiometers like a normal Stratocaster has, make sure you have them in order, knowing which one, let me get back in frame here, knowing which one goes in what hole, because you don't want your volume on your tone and your tone on your volume and vice versa. And uh, so, you know, on this guitar, like I said, I've only got one potentiometer to worry about and it's going in that hole. And, and then I've got my kill switch in this smaller hole right here. And uh, our pickups are all uh, in order here. So we'll just leave all of this the way it is. And now we're gonna paint this pick guard. All right, so next, uh, before we start painting, uh, we're gonna just clean this up a little bit. A little Windex will do the trick just to uh, get the grease and grime off of it. Get that little cleaning. Probably not really necessary as we're going to sand it. I've got a little sanding block here with some fairly fine grit uh, sandpaper on it. Now, what we're using here for the painting job is Krylon Fusion uh, Gloss Black. But uh, this, uh, this paint uh, sticks to plastic. So really, 
from my understanding, I, I don't even need to sand this, but I'm just being extra cautious. I'm going to give it a quick sanding so it gives something uh, the paint something to stick to. But uh, supposedly this paint here will stick right to the plastic regardless. But I'm just going to give it a light sanding to begin anyway. Just to uh, rough it up a little bit. You know, because at the end of the day, once it's on and black, I've got white underneath. And even a little uh, a little fingernail mark is going to show through. So we really want this paint to stick. So I'm just going to sand this for maybe, I don't know, two minutes maybe. Just to rough it up, get any, uh, you know, gloss off of it. And that should just about do it for sanding. Now you can use your uh, Windex that you had to clean up your guitar case. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's paint this guy, shall we? We're gonna do this outside because uh, I'm in an apartment, so I don't wanna be spray painting indoors. And uh, so let's take this outside. We're going to put uh, layers. We're not going to just, you know, it's probably going to go on. Black on white is going to go on pretty easily. But uh, I'm going to put maybe four light coats instead of one or two thicker coats. And let them dry, maybe 15 minutes each. And then we should be done. And then we just got to replace this. Put everything back in its home. And back on the guitar. So let's take this outside and put a few coats of paint on it. All right, so we're out on my patio and there's no winds, which is perfect. Uh, so uh, we're just gonna put uh, about maybe four or five nice light coats on this pick guard here, waiting be about 15 minutes between each coat to let it dry. And in about an hour and a half, we should be done. Uh, it should all be dry and ready to go back on the guitar. So I've already got this uh, well shooken up here. Just going to apply, uh, like I said, first coat here, and then we're going to repeat this, you know, three to five times. And that's good for the first coat right there. And uh, we're going to let this sit for about 15 minutes, add another coat, 15 more minutes, add another coat, see how it looks. And, uh, you know, probably doesn't need five coats because it's black going on white. But, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, and then after, like I said, about an hour and a half, this should be ready to go back on the guitar. All right then, we are done. And uh, it looks absolutely fantastic, I think. All in all, uh, I put five light coats of the Krylon Fusion on it. And just to be on the safe side, I let it sit overnight to dry well and good before putting it back on the guitar. Now, as you can see, uh, I now have strings on the guitar, uh, whereas I didn't when I initially removed the pickguard yesterday. Uh, that's because I thought I was done last night and uh, was finishing up this video, put the pickguard back on and the strings uh, after about four coats, and unfortunately it wasn't completely dry and I noticed a small fingerprint uh, in the not quite dry paint whoops, uh, had to remove it uh, all over again and put one final coat over it and uh, that's why I let it sit overnight. Uh, just so you know, it is possible to remove and replace the pick guard without removing the strings, but it does take a bit of finagling to get it out. Uh, honestly though, it is a whole lot easier to get everything out without the strings on the guitar. Uh, I'm just cheap and uh, didn't want to waste a brand new set of strings that I had just put on the guitar. Uh, regardless, at this point, we just need to reverse everything we did when we uh, remove the pick guard, uh, starting with putting the pickups back in the pickup slots. So let's get at this, uh, put this guitar back together and see how she looks in one piece with her new black pick guard.
Well, there we are. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, much better than before. Now, I am 100% happy with this guitar. Uh, a bit more Gilmore-ish looking, I think, despite the uh, rosewood fretboard and the, the black pickups. Uh, I certainly hope you found that helpful. Were you either looking to change the color of your pickguard or just to remove and replace one with an aftermarket pick guard. Not that tough or expensive a job, but uh, just a little bit time consuming waiting for the paint to dry. Uh, drop me a subscribe if you haven't done that already. That would be awfully nice. I uh, hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may be, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.